Hey, what's up guys? This is Murray aka Mr. Scary Muffin and uh, by request I am going to do a tutorial or uh, some kind of guided tour, I guess, of MC Edit. Um, I guess I'll start off with this interface here. This is the opening screen when you first boot it up. I'm running the 64-bit version because I'm cool like that. Um, what's really great about MC Edit is that you can download all updates right from the window here. Uh, I'm not going to update right now just because I have no idea what's in the update and I already know that it works as it is uh, for this video. So um, your f original five levels will be here available uh, for you to grab. You can also create new worlds and just name them whatever you like. I am going to open a level and show you guys how to do that. Actually I don't even know if you can see this. Um, but basically what you have to do is you have to go into the a folder and look for the level.data or DAT file and once you uh, get that you will be able to uh, check it out and let's go with something you guys should all be very familiar with uh, here we go and here we go that doesn't work. What's up guys? This is Murray aka Mr. Scary Muffin and I am going to do a, by request a little tutorial or uh, I guess a guided tour of MC Edit. Um, first things first, let's take a look at the starting screen. This is what you get when you first boot up the program. I'm running the 64-bit because I'm just cool like that. You can uh, download, what's really cool about MC Edit is you can download all updates just by clicking this download thing here. If you do want to check updates, this check update right here. That's really awesome just to have an uh, in-program method of updating it and I don't have to go and find the latest version or even check to see if he's updated a version to match uh, whatever updates uh, Minecraft has come up with. Your uh, original five levels will be here and you can load them up. You can also create new worlds and rename them whatever you like. I'm going to open an existing file and um, you can't see this because Fraps doesn't pick it up but basically what you need to do is you want to scroll down to the level.dat file and I'm going to pull up something that's probably very familiar to all of you guys who are watching it's um, whoops that's not the way we want to go it's our lovely escape craft yeah and that's a, a big giant arrow made out of light stone pointing straight down towards where the spawn is so that um, multiplayer people who spawn outside can find their way in. Now um, special tiles that haven't been really, they don't really render well like tiles, uh, plates and um, sometimes even ladders I think they don't render very well so they show up at these purple boxes um, and these purple boxes can be really pretty much anything. These ones here are all signs. Um, take a look at the one over here. can't really see that one actually but you'll see some later on. Actually let's go down over here. So sign signs and these two are stone plates that open up this door and there's more signs and there's that wooden plate and uh, you can't even see portraits because this is where we put the hero brine. Uh, picture. Okay, uh, let's go back up to spawn, which is guy right here. Uh, the controls for this, you got your WASD uh, controls, which controls your forward, back, left, right motion. Then you have an additional Q and Z, which controls you going up and down. Um, if you hold down your right click mouse button, it'll allow you to look around. If you let go of that, you can move the mouse cursor around. That's pretty much the uh, gist of it. If you single click on your right cursor, it will lock onto the view mode. And you can use this to select air tiles. Uh, because normally if you undo that, you can only select physical tiles that your mouse is on top of. Okay, so we are going to go through each of these uh, tools on the bottom here. and just like in Minecraft you can access the tools by pushing your uh, mouse button, your keyboards uh, button. So if I wanted to go into the brush key I just press 2. If I want to go to the selection key I press 1. Selection key is pretty simple. You basically click on a block and then you can that will be your first selection. You can click on a second block and that will draw and this works in three dimensions so if I wanted for example to select this which is the Hall of Fame 
then I would just click that and it would select the entire three dimensional area and you can hold down these nudge buttons and click using your WASD Q and Z buttons you can adjust things uh, minutely this way um, which was really helpful when putting everything together and trying to match up and line up all the doors just make sure I didn't screw up anything there uh, that's basically selection and you'll be using selection uh, in conjunction with other other the, the other functions uh, if you need to again if you need to select for example air uh, this one just keeps the previous selection so it drew a new thing but let's say I wanted to uh, select some air over here then I either hold my right click button and try to find where I want and then left click in order to connect that or I can right click to basically be on permanent view mode and then just move my WASAD stuff to find that particular one I want there's various ways you can do it so there I just selected air tiles there and if I wanted to do something with it I could um, such as fill it with stone or something if that's what I wanted to do then let's not do that okay oh and whoops that's the phone give me a sec guys okay so um, you have uh, different abilities you can select whole chunks you can delete blocks or you can just press the delete button on your keyboard that works too uh, delete, delete entities I've actually never used uh, export schematic uh, we'll go into that a little bit later so let's go to the brush key and the brush is actually um, is not as versatile as I would like simply because I use other you know actual like illustrator or even paint or whatever but what you can do is you can select your size uh, the one you'll probably be using the most is this the single block uh, what I would like is having lines for example or even being able to make a big wall um, otherwise all the other sizes that they do are usually orbs these little balls and if you look over here at the ruins um, you might even notice that hey they look pretty much the same that's because I basically use the brush here to create these chunks and just bleh, splat them out all over the place so they look a little bit like ruins um, but for the most part you'll be using the single and you can oh, okay. yeah you can also make squares if you wanted to uh, and diamonds and round but for the most part uh, I would, wouldn't mind like a 1 by 2 or 1 by 1 by 4 or something like that um, so we have your different tiles and you can search for them by name which I highly recommend you do uh, there are some of the names are a little bit weird for example um, adminium would be bedrock um, I th think let's say bloodstone nope he changed the name to netherrack and yeah he will keep up with the correct names uh, glowstone is glowstone not light stone let's see he used to do slash something and then that way if you look up say bedrock or adminium you would get it either way uh, redstone will give you all the things that are red it's quite a nice versatile little tool to search for things and whatever you select it's over there and you can start plopping down like mushrooms on top of lava if you wanted to I think that's probably just going to disappear once it renders okay the next tool here is the clone tool which is uh, extremely helpful for building uh, replicas and I'll give you an example if I can find that room let's see we are here this is the door platformer which everyone loves actually yeah I did use it for the door platformer 